All right, this is a little review tape for um, the anatomy and physiology part two. It's going to be on stress and um, the also the um, endocrine system. This is showing a little model we have of the pituitary gland with the posterior lobe and the intermediate lobe um, and the anterior lobe. The posterior lobe is also called the neurohypophysis. It releases uh, ADH and oxytocin. The intermediate lobe releases MSH, which is melanocyte stimulating hormone, stimulates the melanocytes to produce melanin in the skin. The anterior lobe is going to have two kinds of cells, chromophobes and chromophiles. The chromophobes are pale, non-secretory cells. The chromophiles are secretory cells, and you have two types, acidophiles and basophiles. The acidophiles produce growth hormone and prolactin. Uh, and the basophils produce ACTH, TSH, FSH, LH, and ICSH. You need to refer to your charts on that. That um, ACTH is the one released uh, during the stress response that stimulates the adrenal cortex. It stands for adrenocorticotrophic hormone. Okay, and then um, TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone. FSH, LH, and ICSH are called gonadotrophic hormones. FSH stimulates the follicles in the ovary in females to, to grow, and then they produce estrogen. Um, in the male, FSH stimulates the seminiferous tubules to produce sperm. LH and ICSH are the same chemical, uh, same hormone, but they're called differently. In females, it's called LH, luteinizing hormone. It stimulates the follicle to complete the maturation, and it brings up about ovulation of the follicle and with the release of the egg, and then the formation of the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum is endocrine, um, and that's in the ovary, and that produces estrogen and progesterone. In males, ICSH, interstitial cell stimulating hormone, stimulates the interstitial cells that are between the seminiferous tubules. Those interstitial cells produce testosterone. Okay, the hypothalamus actually controls the pituitary, though. All right, here on the the large mannequin, we have the, the thyroid, parathyroid in the neck region, um, right under the blue larynx. Then over the heart would be the thymus, it's not shown here. Over here in the left hypochondriac region would be the spleen, which is a lymphatic organ. Over the kidneys will be the adrenal glands. Um, down here in the inguinal region, we see those X's, that's on the lymph nodes or lymph glands, and they have uh, lymph nodules within them. Remember, during the stress response, during the alarm reaction, if the stress triad okay. occurs, one part would be the shrinkage of the lymph glands. That would be the spleen and lymph nodes and thymus, and that would, we say they atrophy. Um, just because somebody's had stress, though, doesn't mean they have to have the stress triad. But if it occurs, it occurs in the alarm reaction. Okay, then here we have a cloth model showing the hypothalamus and the pituitary. The yellow cells are in the hypothalamus. The blue there represents the hypophyseal portal system. The red arteries coming into the area, and then the two sets of blue or the two sets of capillaries in the hypophyseal portal system. Okay, here we have the uh, brain model showing the pituitary here, pituitary. Here is the corpus callosum. Above this is the cingulate gyrus. It's the higher autonomic center. Uh, then we have the pineal body. It's this very small structure here. This larger area is the choroid plexus with the capillaries, but that's the pineal body, which brings about uh, puberty, and it's also important in animals that migrate. Okay, then we move on to the adrenal gland here on top of the kidneys. Remember, the adrenal glands, um, are the cortex is made... Um, uh, from mes, um, from mes, mes, mesoderm, okay, and the medulla comes from nerve tissue. So all mes, uh, mesodermal glands produce steroid hormones. So on the adrenal cortex, which you have three zones, zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, zona reticularis, then these are going to produce steroid hormones. The adrenal medulla is modified sympathetic nerve tissue. Uh, it's called chromaffin tissue. It produces the catecholamines, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. It works with the sympathetic system. Okay, they have, on the sympathetic system, you have the uh, ganglia and the chain, and then you also have some collateral secondary ganglia. So you have um, the celiac ganglion would be above the celiac artery. Superior mesenteric ganglion would be above the superior mesenteric artery. And then down here on the inferior mesenteric artery, the inferior mesenteric ganglion would be there. 
Okay, now the, the um, in the female, the endocrine part, we have the primary organ is the ovary. In the male, the, uh, the primary organ is the uh, testis because they produce the reproductive cells. However, they're also endocrine, and inside the ovary would be when a baby girl is born, she has thousands of uh, primordial cells already in prophase one of mitosis. And so then after um, puberty occurs, then hormones from the pituitary, the FSH stimulates the follicle to produce uh, the primordial cells to have um, to become the the uh, follicles. It's actually germinal cell germinal cells, um, growing cells from the outer cortex of the ovary moves in and, and and surrounds those eggs, and then they begin to grow. Those cells begin to grow, and there, then that forms the primary follicle. Well, the follicles produce estrogen, and then as FSH comes from pituitary, the follicles continue to grow. So there may be five or six develop, and then uh, the hormones, the estrogen, goes back and shuts off the FSH so that finally there's only enough for one follicle to complete the maturation. And then LH comes from pituitary, causes the follicle to complete the maturation, brings about ovulation and the release of the egg, which is ovulation, and the formation of the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum in the ovary then produces estrogen and progesterone. Okay, now in the, in the male, in the uh, testis, that would be the primary organ. Okay, there would be seminiferous tubules and interstitial cells. The interstitial cells are the ones that are endocrine, and um, they are stimulated by ICSH from the pituitary, and the interstitial cells then produce testosterone. The FSH from the, from the pituitary causes the seminiferous tubules to uh, grow and produce sperm. Okay, I'll stop there. <laughs>